We've just completed the construction of the house and we've installed the landscape and as you can see it looks great but what's really exciting is what's inside. So here we are in the interior space. We've created a plan that is very functional but not overly large. We try to make the best use out of the spaces that we have. So in the entry space we have enough room for entry and greeting guests. We have shelving for storage. A long mudroom hall where we have coat hooks and a bench for sitting down to take your shoes off. And then in addition to that we have this enormous oversized door behind which we have ample hanging space for all the garments and clothing that you need for all the seasons in Maine. We really focused on creating a generous mudroom because we figured with all the mud and inclement weather that we can have it's always nice to be able to put that stuff somewhere. In addition to that, at the end of the hall we have a small powder room. Now let me go show you the interior spaces. So here we are in the kitchen, the dining and living room spaces, and specifically right now the kitchen. Here it's just a, a simple galley kitchen design. We have a nice local granite countertop. Um, this is a stone that was quarried about 20 miles away from where we are. So it's a local material that's green and of course very, very durable. And we've decided that we wanted to have a nice simple surface um, that we could provide a lot of different areas to work on from both sides of the counter. And then behind here we have the range with the range hood. Now again, we're always thinking about the energy consumption with this building. So when we're looking at details like cooking, uh, we have the ability to create a lot of moisture in, and when we're cooking uh, pasta or boiling water. And to deal with that, or sometimes smells as well, uh, we have the range hood. In this case, the range hood is what's called a recirculating hood, which means the air from the range hood isn't taken and drawn outside. It's actually taken through a carbon filter to remove the smells out of the air or smoke if there is any. And then it actually is exhausted right here above the refrigerator. The reason we chose to do that is because we would prefer to maintain and capture as much of the heat that we're generating in the building and keep it in the building for the heating months. So instead of exhausting it out the door and losing all that heat and moisture, we're actually bringing it back into the space filtered. Now, in addition to having the filter above there and the exhaust port, up in the ceiling here, we have a port for our exhaust for the heat recovery ventilator. This port will allow the air to be drawn out of the kitchen with the moisture and smells that we're creating by cooking from directly from the range or from the exhaust from the range hood up there and it will draw it out through the heat recovery ventilation system. The benefit of that is all the, the moisture and the heat that we're creating in the range will then be transferred back into the house in the fresh air incoming stream of air. So again, we're always recuperating the air but bringing in fresh air while doing so. So let me show you now the, the living room. Here again, we've created a plan that's simple and open, but it's also spacious uh, with a lot of extra areas for storage to house all the needs that you have in the living room. In this case, we have built-in shelving with storage below. We have, again, as we've seen in earlier segments, a timber frame ceiling that's 10 feet tall, so it's very generous in here. Um, but it also brings in the warmth of the local main wood and uh, the warmth of the wood I think in these spaces is a nice counterpoint um, to the openness. Over here we have the windows which as we've talked about as well are very important in the energy efficiency of this building. In this case when you look around the, the house uh, the size of these windows and their manufacturing, the type of glass that we're using they really act as the heating system for the building. We're using that passive solar gain in this space to really provide a lot of the heat load in the winter, or the heating in the winter. But what can happen with these large windows is you can get sometimes too much light or, or there can be a lot of glare. Say in the winter when you have snow and a low sun angle it can become quite bright. So to help with the glare and built into the detail of the house behind the, the timber frame we have a roll down shade that provides um, the ability to reduce the glare. You can actually see through this shade so you're not during the day when it's sunny out you're not going to be blinded by the light you can control that but you can also see outside and be connected to the exterior. So with these big windows they're providing a lot of heat but we also have to make sure that the, they remain comfortable in the space and don't dominate with too much extra lighting. 
The other part of the heating system in this building is located over here. A lot of times people assume in Maine that if you have an exposed concrete slab that you would put radiant tubing in it. And that does make a lot of sense for average buildings because their heat load is very great. But in our case, our heat load for the building is so small that providing the radiant tubing in the concrete floor would actually significantly overheat the space. To give you an idea of the amount of heat that we need, if this building were going to be heated to 70 degrees in the coldest night in January, in the middle of the night, it would only take the heat output of about a hair dryer to keep the entire building at 70 degrees. So that's an extremely small amount of heat. For that reason, because we have such a low heat load, um, we can deliver it in a whole bunch of different ways using a, many different fuel sources. In this case, as you can see down here, we're using a very simple electric baseboard heater, in this case two feet for the living room, which is about standard issue in any bathroom. But in our case, because our heat loads are so small that the electric heating becomes actual, actually a very cost-effective system to both heat the space, but also to install the mechanical systems. Because electric baseboard heating is very inexpensive. So in the construction process, we're saving money by not having to pay for expensive heating systems. Uh, the whole entire heating system for this house cost about $500. Now, the benefit of the electric heat as well is that we can create the electricity for that heat right here on site with solar electric panels. Over here, adjacent to the kitchen, we have another sliding door in which we have a pantry and in this case we have right here the solar inverter for the electrical system and a hot water tape tank for the solar thermal system. Those two systems combined will create enough energy for this entire building over the course of the year as the building will consume. So essentially this building is net zero over the course of an entire year because we have the solar electric panels to provide the heating, um, the cooking with an electric stove, computers, all the other plug loads, lighting, and then we have the solar thermal system to cover the hot water demand. So this building, because we've reduced the energy demands on it so much, is able to be uh, net zero in a very cost-effective way. So let me show you upstairs. This is a three-bedroom house with a full bathroom upstairs and we also have a laundry closet. The full bathroom is just a simple design made to be efficient and comfortable. This is one of the bedrooms in here. Again, the spaces of the upstairs are modest but we've made them very spacious with large windows and as you can see above, a cathedral ceiling. Because again, here in the bedrooms, we've decided that we can make a nice compact design that's efficient, but it can be very spacious by using the space above and the windows to increase uh, the area of the room. Over here, we have our laundry closet. This is an interesting concept that we came about through the passive house work that we've done. Instead of putting a conventional electric dryer, we looked at the energy consumption of that and decided instead to go with um, this laundry closet idea, which is something that's quite popular in Germany. It uses, for the drying component, a laundry spinner, and then, which takes through cent centrifugal um, action, takes the, uh, most of the moisture out of the clothing. Once it's mostly dry then, we'll hang that clothing on these lines right here. In addition to that, here again we have an exhaust port for the heat recovery ventilation system. So we're always drawing air through the, the drying laundry. And we found based on our early testing that it only takes a few hours to dry the clothes once they're hung on the line. And the beauty is with this large door, we can access it, close it all off, when, and then it disappears. We're really pleased with how the house turned out. And we're on track to become the first passive house in Maine, which verifies its exceptional energy performance. But what we think is really wonderful is how comfortable and great it would be to live in. We hope you would agree with that. Thanks for watching.